Uriange, are you in? Unto a world weary of heroes, a hero wends his way. The Exarch did send word that thou would seek me out, but ne'er did I imagine thou wouldst arrive so soon. Full glad am I to see thee once more, my friend, and none the worse for thy travails. Run along, Minthilia. We will meet you outside. But... Another one for you to imbue, if you'd be so kind. I take it thou hast met with our other comrades already? Hmm. That Master Alfino and Mistress Alize now travel in thy company is of great comfort to me. As for the rest, it beginneth in earnest. The hunting of the Light Wardens, and perforce the war with Yulmor. Hark thee then to my words, and through them behold the vision that I did glimpse, that of the Eighth Umbral Calamity. As I drifted hither to the first, traversing the boundary twixt reality and potentiality, I did bear witness to events yet to come. There I saw the combined forces of Eorzea and the Far East offering fierce resistance to the legions of Garlemald. So fierce, in fact, that they did begin to push the enemy back, ilm by painful ilm at first, then yalm by yalm, and malm by malm in time. Yet the joy they felt was short-lived, for in so doing they did force the Empire's hand, Faced with defeat, the Garleans turned to a weapon most vile, Black Rose. Its potency defied all reckoning. Once released, the gas took on a life of its own, wreaking untold carnage not only in Eorzea, but in the provinces of the Empire besides. From fighters upon the front lines to babes in their beds, none were spared. And as the casualties became too numerous to count, so did the fabric of civilization begin to unravel. Nor did the land itself escape unscathed, for spreading from the site of its release, Black Rose brought death to the very soil. To survive amidst the chaos and upheaval, men came to live by the sword, the rule of law giving way, inevitably, to the rule of might. Thus was the spark struck and the fire kindled, and swiftly did it spread as a blaze in a field of straw to engulf every corner of the world. Nations worthy of the name did then cease to exist, and those souls, brave and true, who might have risen to restore order,
were no more, for the weapon spared not one, not even thee. An endless age of war, begotten by the blight of Black Rose. Such is the legacy of the eighth umbral calamity which I did behold. No matter the cost, we must forestall this tragedy. To that end, I have labored during my sojourn in this world, discovering in so doing the answer to a pressing mystery. That of Black Rose's inexplicable potency. Come. Dost thou recognize yonder chart? Indeed, tis a rendering of the elemental wheel, such as one might find in classrooms across the source. As the chart maketh plain, our world is composed of six elements, in addition to which there exist two poles in fundamental opposition. Astral, the active. Umbral, the passive. As a reflection of the source, the first naturally comprises the self-same forces. Yet, curiously, there is a notable divergence in their nomenclature. To be specific, the denizens of this world employ not the terms astral and umbral. Thus was I moved to inquire what name said forces had been assigned. A simple question which yielded a most unexpected answer. Upon demanding the name of the pole aligned with activity and growth, I was told that as life's myriad colors combined to produce black, the people of the first had called it darkness. At this did my mind begin to race. It was only when I asked what name had been given to the pole aligned with passivity that mine eyes were opened to the truth. Peace and tranquility being as purest white unmarred by color, I was told it had been given the name of light. That's umbral light and astral darkness, yes? I'm no etherologist, but it strikes me that the nomenclature of the first is rooted in the generation of the two forces while our own appears to focus on their effects. Which makes one wonder, have we had it backwards all this time? Tis indeed a compelling question, and one which beareth closer examination. Yet what knowledge we already possess sufficeth to explain the chain of events. The phenomenon of etheric thinning observed in the source is the consequence of light, the power of stasis, flowing in from the first to stifle the movement of ether within the land. And according to Master Alfino, Black Rose slayeth by halting the circulation of ether within living beings. Should such a weapon be unleashed even as the first were rejoined, replete as it is with light, We would have a disaster of untold proportions on our hands. A calamity. Well, at least we have a better grasp of what we're facing. Our objective, however, remains unchanged. We are to eliminate the Light Warden of Ilneg. Speaking of which, were you able to ascertain its whereabouts? Aye. 
is all but certainly ensconced within Leergir, the castle which standeth in the midst of the lake. To enter said stronghold, we must needs turn to the Pixies for aid. Fortunately, I have become quite adept at courting their cooperation. Henceforth shall I accompany you, and do all in my power to ensure that my vision doth not come to pass. Tis done. The Pixies shall be well pleased with these gifts. Ah, lest I forget. White Aurasite, newly forged for thy use. Our mission being to thwart a rejoining, we will most assuredly cross paths with those who crave the contrary, our eternal enemies. Thus did I choose to abide in this ether-rich land, the better to fashion a trap for the Asian's essence. May I come in now? You may indeed, assuming you've finished. I did as you asked. That's my girl, thank you. I should probably explain. Though my body remained behind in the source, its limitations saw fit to accompany me. Which is to say, I cannot manipulate ether. I took up the gun blade for its defensive advantages, but on account of my little impairment, I cannot imbue the ammunition myself. Luckily for me, Minfilia has quite a talent for it. Minfilia. Once we set forth, we are not like to return for some while. If thou wouldst choose tomes to take with thee, let it be now. Really? May I? Of course, my dear. Yet have care thou dost not add overmuch to thy burden, lest I incur Thancred's ire. Hast thou spoken to him of thine encounter with the Minfilia of Eld? Well, I suppose now is as good a time as any. As you know, I freed young Minfilia from captivity in Yulmore some three years past. Not long after, the two of us journeyed to the south of Armoreng to the edge of the empty, where the flood was halted. It was there that she awakened, the Minfilia of old, my Minfilia. Tell me, tell me, what must I do to bring you back? My dearest Thancred, as I am now, I am no different from an Asian. This child is but a vessel. 
one of many I have used that I might spread word of her enduring blessing and preserve the flame of hope. In my name, each has died, never having lived her own life. I have taken enough from these children. I will take no more. But what of your suffering, your sacrifice? This isn't fair! I will not stand for it. I cannot. There must be something we can do. Tell me! Should the day come when this child grows weary of fighting and wishes to cast it all aside, then shall I take up her burden. But should she wish instead to become the master of her own destiny, then shall I bequeath to her my all. Imbued with the strength that I reserve for rebirth, she may come to wield my powers as her own. And what of my wishes? What of Flamines? What of all the people who love and care for you and want nothing more than to see you again? It is not their decision to make. It is hers. This child's, this Minfilia's. You have ever watched over me, Thancred. Now I ask that you do the same for her. Protect her. Teach her. Stand by her as you stood by me. There is much and more she does not know. She needs a guide to show her the ways of the world, or she will never find her own path. When the time comes, you will find me here. Until that day. Minfilia, wait! What... what happened?